I started to hear voices when I was 17 years old. Crazy people? Crazy people. Kill yourself, kill your mother, kill your sister. Psychopaths. Straight jackets and asylum. Psychiatry, medication. I totally believed that the devil had taken me over. Something wrong with the person. At the age of 17, Catherine Penny was diagnosed with schizophrenia. They told my mother... Mental illness. She needed to realize... Mental illness. I had an illness. Mental illness. That nobody gets well from. Mental illness. And she needed to take care of her other children. Severe mental illness. After being put on various antipsychotic medications, which not only didn't work, but caused severe side effects, Catherine entered a psychiatric hospital where she began daily therapy with Dr. Daniel Dorman. She was so shut down, she didn't even swallow her own saliva. She actually left her mouth open a little bit, and her saliva drooled down all over the front of her dress and drip in a string off the hem into a puddle on the floor. Isn't it much easier to give somebody a pill and get rid of them? Were you on medication the whole time you were hospitalized? No. Dr. Dorman uh, told my parents when he had a consultation with them that he did not want Kathy to have another crutch. He wanted her to know that when she gets well, she did it herself. I don't use medical model when I sit down. I don't, I, I do not formulate any diagnosis at all when I sit down with somebody. I don't care. I, I don't even think about it. It's, I want to know the person's story and what she's about and what her struggle is. Medical model thinking is a symptom checklist which then are gathered together into uh, categories and then treated as if it's a medical problem, usually with drugs. The therapist can act as a reliable guide, a guide into the mind, into the horrors, and a guide with regard to the realities of the world. Working with schizophrenics challenge our own um, sense of ourselves and our own beings in many, many ways. And so um, sometimes that can be exciting, as I said, and sometimes it can be pretty threatening. Sometimes you, you feel you're going out of your mind. I think it's also just easier to say, this is genetic, it's a chemical imbalance, and let's just treat it with drugs. And it's part, it, it reflects our culture in general, that we're, we're, we're moving towards quick fixes and easy ways out. Whatever can do things quickly is what, you know, we want to move people towards. And to really work, do the work that I'm saying is necessary, it takes time. If a person can grow through the psychosis, can understand through the dynamic work what had led to the breakdown and what was contributing to the new cohesion, they have then a pride in personhood and a sense of being a centered self who can then move forward and tackle different challenges. If a person feels held together with the scotch tape of medication, that person is going to be scared to go out in the rain for fear that the rain is going to wash the scotch tape off and they'll be back in a hospital. This idea that, that schizophrenia is a biological or, or neurological illness, while it's true that there are abnormalities that are biological and neurological, I think they're caused by psychological factors. The reason I think that is because when people get engaged in good effective psychotherapy, those underlying biological and neurological changes or differences resolve. For years, textbooks have talked about how psychotherapy with people that are schizophrenic or psychotic isn't effective. In fact, some of them suggest it's even harmful. Um, and that's based on the research that they review to write their textbooks. They're not reading all the research. Do you believe that someone could recover fully from schizophrenia and live a life without any psychiatric medication? Oh, absolutely. First of all, there's two ways you can answer that question. One, I know many people, as you do, who've been diagnosed with schizophrenia and indeed descended deep into psychotic breaks who have recovered and are off their medications. So personal experience tells you that it's possible and that it can happen. But second of all, and this is what we don't know about and we forget about, if you look at the research literature, there's, the recovery was even sort of common and I mean off medication uh, uh, recovery was quite common before we ended up with this paradigm of care telling people they had to be on drugs for life and they had no 
hope of ever recovering. Do you, do you think young psychiatrists are being told, you know, we, we followed schizophrenia patients up for 30 years, and we found that, believe it or not, we don't have to, we don't have to be so despairing. A third completely recover. Now, they all happen to be off their drugs, so what we should do is help them get off their drugs. Right, of course. Is that told to, psychi is that told to psychi psychiatric residents today? Not a chance.